serialized TV is a much bigger industry than movies. But again, it hasn't been able to develop because of the only ad support. So Indian TV production values are much lower than movies. And what we're doing is investing like Sacred Games in high touch series, you know, like Narcos that has these great looks and a global appeal. And I think will be a giant exporter of Indian stories, because of course the rich storytelling, thousands of years, there's great stories all here. Comes from here. Um, but it hasn't been able to find a market uh, in television because of the lack of premium. So we hope to develop that market, develop those local shows, and be a great exporter, as well as sharer and importer of content from around the world. And do we need global powerhouses for that? Because I think Disney takes the best stories from around the world, including European fables, and has made them into absolute, you know, sort of tenfold uh, content across the world. And I think some of the best storytelling can originate from India. So is there some lesson to be learned where we can look at it from a global scale? Yeah, I think we'll see with Sacred Games coming uh, at the end of the year, the first big spectacular Netflix series. If you enjoyed Narcos or The Crown, or oh, these- some visuals at the back. Also that's right, that's right. Yeah. Very beginning. Um, I think you'll, you'll enjoy this and you'll see, you know, a different side of Mumbai. It's not a pretty happy dancey one. You know, it's crime and gritty like Narcos. Okay, I'm just gonna shift tracks a bit. And I think that's because I was sitting next to Jeff at Coursera and we were just chatting. And your background before this was, in education in some form or the yep. other. And, and just as we see it today, I, I strongly believe that you know, the top three internet companies in the world tomorrow, the next 10 years, will be an education company. But I think the, the rhetoric today is so much higher that it'll be an entertainment company or a commerce company. So just having seen what you've seen as far as Netflix is concerned, and putting on your education hat on, where do you see that? As, do you see an education company being in the top three internet companies in the world? You know, it could well be uh, education, such a, a huge aspect of what we do, but it's so important that, for example, a lot of us donate to Khan Academy and the others that are nonprofits because education feels like a right. And so it's tricky to figure out the business models in that area. Uh, whereas entertainment is clearly a pleasure. And so where Netflix is gonna focus on great entertainment, and there's a soft education, seeing other cultures, language, that kind of thing. But then on a personal basis, I do a bunch of philanthropy and education because I was a high school teacher when I first got out of college for a couple of years, teaching a British O-level math, and I've always had a soft spot for, for that. Of course, so Netflix tomorrow is still entertainment or is it could be sports, it could be sports, education, and entertainment? Is that a vision for the future at all for, for a company like Netflix? Netflix tomorrow is spectacular entertainment, some of the best that's ever been produced. Not sports, not news, but just incredible entertainment from around the world, shared around the world, that really helps open up people's exposure and content that they just can't wait to watch. Okay, so I think you're very clear about the positioning of where the company needs to go, with the same way that in 1997, you were clear about your vision. So maybe I'll end with just a sort of a quick answer on, on Coming back to the price sensitivity and what we talked about uh, really then, then I just have one last question after that. But if you had to choose for Netflix, uh, 300 million subscribers at $120 or a billion subscribers at $60, what would you choose? I say the math again. <laughs> I, you, you want it's me to go for the, the big numbers? It's how not about, about the math. How about if I say both, a billion and <laughs> no. uh, three? No, I, I think it's not about the math. I think I, it's, about, it's about the crossroad that a lot of people, when they're thinking about their businesses, yes. and they're thinking about scale, then they're thinking about price sensitivity, uh, always think that they can break out. So it's, it's, a, it's more a question about scale in terms of a base versus price flexibility. I mean, it is great to entertain everyone and scale's the right point. And we think at our price points that we can generate that by creating this uh, sense of premium TV and other competitors also are lifting the market in that way. Because again, it's always been free ad supported. And now we're developing this um, more DVD-like and movie-like cinematic television. Right. So in ways, it's this great new category. So just my last question, because I think Media and entertainment seems like a terminology for the 20th century. And if we had to redefine a media and entertainment company for the 21st century, and you're kind of doing that already, how would you define a media and entertainment company for the 21st century? Well, it's a company that uses technology to deliver incredible experiences, emotional experiences. Experiences that you go, oh, to a friend, you've got to see this film, you've got to see this show. And what about data and, and, and algorithms and, and using that? Because I think that is also part of 
the success formula for the, f for the future of digital. So Data is super important, but we spend a billion on technology and eight billion on content.